Thank you so much for tuning in to my channel today i have two newborn sessions one with a boy and one with a girl so i thought i would i would record a small video on how i set up for a newborn session so first of all the boy who is coming is two and a half weeks old so before the session i would uh, communicate with the mother seeing how they're doing he was born through a c-section but he's doing really well uh, he gained weight, so he is already heavier than when he was born. Babies usually lose some weight and then they gain more weight and then they're back to their birth weight, which is a good time to go outside. Um, he can regulate his temperature really well. Um, so I will just ask how they're doing and um, he has an older sister who also wants to be in the photo. So that's good to know. He's two and a half weeks old today. What I do is I ask the parents which colors they like. So I have several color schemes. Like for example here you can see like creamy whites, like earthy brown colors, um, like blue colors. And then when it's a girl I also have like pink and purple salmon colors. So I ask the parents which colors they like and then I know what to set up in the studio. So the mom emailed me that she likes brown, like sand colors and mint green. So we're gonna work with that. During the session, I can always pull out other things. Parents can pull out things. They can point out which colors they like. I have some portfolio books that they can go through and then they can tell me which other colors they might like so we can add them to the session as well. Here's the sitting area for the parents. I made sure that the kitchen is clean. I did the dishes from yesterday. Um, here I will have one decor that we can use uh, with the siblings so the siblings can lie next to each other and I can take a photo from the top. Also I can put the newborn in a basket and then use the flocati as a background. Here I pulled down this backdrop to use for the sibling shot because um, I really like these colors. When I don't have an older brother or sister coming in I will just make sure that this background is, goes all the way up. So we can use it as a background for the parent shot. Right now we can use the gray as a background for the parent shot. It, looked it looks really wrinkled right now. It's not that bad when I take a photo. And here I have another backdrop uh, that we can use. Uh, I have a separate video on how I made this and I have a separate video on how I made this garland. So that's the, um, the other backdrop. Here the parents can just sit and relax. I have my portfolio books right here. They can go through and just see what they like. Like I have different colors, positions, materials. And they can just see what, like, what speaks to them, what they like. Um, I still have some fresh flowers here from my last boho themed cake, sm cake smash. Uh, for the afternoon when I have the newborn girl, I might use them. Um, yeah, here the older sibling can sit and eat if she wants. We have a little play area here. Um, so yeah, this is now my newborn corner. I'll just pull back my softbox. So we can use this floor as a setup. I have like my basket. I also have a DIY video on how I um, painted this basket. I have my little blanket here. I'll remove this because it's a boy session. I might add some burlap later. But anyway, I have my backdrop here now as a scent color. I'm just gonna add another backdrop on top, which is mint green. So we can start with that, then take the mint green off and continue with the scent colored backdrop. Okay, so I have a heater here. Um, it will be set at 23, 23 degrees Celsius. The whole room will be 22 degrees Celsius. So it's just a little bit of extra heat coming out. I'm actually usually in between the heat and the baby, so I mo can monitor that the baby doesn't get too warm. I will check uh, the temperature of the baby's neck just with my hand uh, and their feet. The neck is the most important to check. Um, being overheated is actually more dangerous for a baby than getting like uh, too, too cold. Like, because babies don't sweat, so they cannot get rid of their heat. And it's actually really dangerous when a baby gets too hot. So I make sure that when the baby is wearing like a newborn outfit or is wrapped in several layers of wrap um, that the heater is not 
on or not too close to the baby because then 22 degrees Celsius should be enough. Um, some babies like it more warm, some babies don't. Here I have several layers of backdrop on top of a bean bag. I think I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight layers. Um, under here you have my bean bag and I have a little pillow right here. Um, I will put it where the head of the baby will be when we start for the post when the baby is on his or her back and on his on her side. Uh, later on, when I put the baby on his or her hands, I will use my other posing pillows, which I have on the side here. I use this big one to put it, the baby on their hands. Um, the other ones I will just use as extra support, maybe under their feet or under their uh, little behind. Um, so I have my backdrop ready right now. I'm just going to get some uh, wraps and put them here on the side so I have them ready to use. Um, it's a boy, so we won't use any headbands, but I will wrap a little head. Outfits I have on the other side, I'll show you later. But I usually start with the baby, uh, lifting the baby out of the car seat, putting them on the beanbag, and then undressing them slowly. Um, right here I have my baby shusher, which will be on this side, where the light is coming from as well. The light is coming from this side, I have natural daylight coming in. I also have my Westcott 50 inch softbox right here and I will move that throughout the session. So first I will have it probably here, then I will change the baby in another position, I will move my light to see what I like. Sometimes I like backlight, sometimes I like um, the lights to fall more on the face of the baby, I will move my light around. Um, so yeah, the baby shusher will be on this side. This, this sound makes the babies really sleepy. Um, the heat is on this side. I have my speed light inside of my softbox. I'll probably do a separate video on how I use flash or studio light during my session. But for now, I'll just grab some matching wraps. Um, just some uh, off like white, always looks nice with mint. I use the sand color, which the mom liked and just some wraps that I can use throughout the session that will look nice for the baby. Just some mint. And I'll just put them on the side. And I can always grab more throughout the session when they say, oh, we like some blue in there as well. I might use it on the sand colored backdrop. Uh, but for now, at least I have something to start with. So here I have my outfits. The parents can see what they like, they can just go through it. Uh, I will already pick out one or two heads and put them on my beanbag. We might not use them, but just to have them close to me so we don't delay by having to pick out a little matching head. the mess <laughs> this is what we used during the session the people just left so I'm gonna uh, clean up and change backdrops and then we're gonna go and set up for the next session so in the end we did sibling photos here we did sibling photos here and just a few photos of the newborn alone here we used this decor as well 
uh, with the newborn alone. We did the photos with the mom and the daughter and the grandmother here on the gray background. The dad was working so he couldn't make it unfortunately. Um, so yeah, the child was changed on the changing table. And uh, oh yeah, we used this background as well. So we did really a lot. We drank some tea. I always have some water bottles here for the moms who are nursing as well. They really like to drink some water just for anyone who wants. I have some juice boxes for the kids. Some snacks, some cookies. Um, there's a bathroom here. <laughs> so yeah, I always make sure that the studio is clean, that the material I'm using is clean and that I have something to drink, something to snack for the parents. I wanted to show you before I started my light setup but the parents, well the mom was a little bit early so I couldn't do that so I thought I would just show you now. So inside my 50 inch Westcott softbox is a trigger and a speed light, it's the SB700. Uh, the setting I use for newborns is like 1 slash 32 or even lower, like 1 slash 64, 1 slash 128, depending on the amount of daylight coming in. Um, it's just one speed light. So to get it to work, I also have a speed light here on top of my camera. I have the 24 70 millimeter lens. So yeah, my shutter speed is usually 200. Uh, my aperture for the baby alone will be around 3.2. And when I'm shooting photos with the siblings, I have a smaller aperture, so a larger number, around five uh, or four and a half. And my ISO will be to match, like somewhere between 400 and 640, sometimes even 800, depending on uh, the colors of the material I'm using, um, the location in the studio, like the amount of daylight coming in, and um, the skin tone of the baby, like uh, several factors will determine my settings of course. I change my settings throughout the session so they're not the same the whole time. So now I have a quick lunch. I'm gonna run to the supermarket and to get some lunch and then I'm gonna set up for my newborn girl to come in. Okay so I thought I would just tell you a little bit about the second newborn who's coming. She was born exactly on her due date. That doesn't really happen often but um, it did. Uh, she's two weeks old today. So yeah, for me, between two and three weeks old is like a perfect age for newborns. But um, sometimes I even take them up to four or five weeks old. Um, and that's usually fine as well. The parents have actually chosen the colors light blue, dark blue, mint green and gray as their favorite colors for the newborn session, which is really cool to use on a girl. I like using blue on a girl. Um, when you use a little headband or tie back or just something lace or like some fabrics, it's still really clear that it is a girl. Um, but they can use blue just fine. Uh, they told me they also like pink, so they actually like a variety of colors, but I think we're going to start with blue and gray. Here you can see the background I have underneath. So it has a little bit of texture and it is mint green and because the texture has flowers I can never use it for boys or at least I don't um, but now I'm using it for a girl so that's cool and then the background that I'm starting with also has some texture and it's this one um, I love that it's like this grayish blue color it actually has two sides so here you can see it's more like wavy and here it looks more like strange circles um, I think I'm going to go for this one because it's a little bit more smooth. So here you see my backdrop and the way it is right now. So I've adjusted the flexi bars a bit. On the side I have these flexi bars from uh, I think it's shootbaby.co.uk uh, you can adjust the width they got closer together so now I have stretched them out a little bit more um, so the blanket is nice and smooth and I have a little bit wider area to take photos on okay so now I'm gonna pick out some matching wraps and tie bags headbands and some hats we start here with the bean bag so we have the two different backdrops I have the mint green one and the gray one 
And on the gray one, I'm gonna use blue colors. On the mint green one, I'm gonna use some like creamy white and some green. Then we're gonna go to that backdrop. Then we're gonna move to the white flocati or the dark wood in the back. Um, and then we do the family photo. So there's plenty of color still for the session. But just to start with, I start on the beanbag. Lavender blue, which is really nice for girls. So this will be for the gray blanket. This is one of my favorite headbands. And I've had people asking me where I bought it. Uh, honestly, I cannot tell you because it was just a mom with her daughter who made these like four years ago. On Facebook she offered it. She doesn't have like a really like a web shop, I think, or an Etsy shop. And I cannot find what her name was. Um, so she made this one and then like the peachy colored one. Here I have a few more. I love the little bow ties that you can just wear as a headband. And this one is more with some flowers and everything. So this will be my starting point right now. So you can see a little lace head, uh, just a few headbands, some wraps and layers, and then the beanbag backdrop. I will also add this blanket because usually when I undress the babies, I mean they have the heater going on and the baby Trisha, but I will still cover them with a the little blanket just to make sure that they don't wake up when I change them. So I love adding these little doilies because it's really clear that it's a girl inside, but she doesn't have to wear like a headband or anything. So for now, I will not put anything there yet uh, because I just want to give the parents some... Um... So here I will do the family photos probably, or we're going to go to the gray background, the one over there. Um, but yeah, the newborn doesn't have any older siblings. So I don't have to put it down to use it for a sibling shot, uh, which is why I'm not putting anything on the flocati yet either, because I don't know if they want to use that one or the dark wood background or like, well, we're going to start with the green wood probably after we finish on the beanbag. But you never know what a session is going to be like because every newborn is different. Um, some are super sleepy. The one from this morning was super sleepy. So we could do like two backdrops and many different other props but sometimes a newborn is quite awake which is also fine i mean you can take beautiful photos when a newborn is awake and is wide-eyed uh, looking at your camera um, but sometimes they just want to be nursed or want to be held and then uh, it takes a little bit longer to take photos because you have to be really patient and make sure that the baby is always comfortable and safe um, and feels nice so then might, we might do less props or just one uh, backdrop on the beanbag, uh, but that's also fine. Like we always have beautiful photos So the people just left. I'm uh, reorganizing this mess and uh, I'm gonna pack up all my stuff. But now you know what I set up for a newborn session. So I always have two bodies here in the studio, two full frame bodies. I have two speed lights here and I have four triggers so that in case something breaks down, I have a backup to use, so that's great. Um, 
So yeah, uh, my babies wear their diapers, which means that I don't have to deal with any uh, dirty patches on my backdrops, except when they uh, throw up or like give back a little bit of milk. So the backdrops that I've used for the babies, I will wash them. Uh, the outfits that I've used for the babies, I will wash, but they actually didn't really wear any outfits. Um, and the wraps I will wash, um, headbands I won't wash because then they'll fall apart but they won't get dirty. I'm heading home right now to spend the afternoon with the kids, uh, we'll cook dinner and then I'll bring them to bed and then after uh, they go to bed which is around 7pm I'll uh, turn on my computer and I'll start editing the sessions from today so that I can send a preview within two days after the session which is most likely tonight already but i don't say that to the clients because then if somehow i don't get to it the same evening like i have family or friends coming over or one of the kids decides not to go to sleep uh, immediately then i will send them their preview tomorrow or the day after i will answer my emails tonight as well i never leave my camera in the studio overnight so yeah i really hope you enjoyed this video on how i prep for a newborn session how I set up for a newborn session uh, but I will repeat myself once again the most important thing that you should do to prep, to prep for a newborn session is to educate yourself to study photography to know about your shutter speed and your ISO and your aperture to not think about your camera anymore when you're photographing newborns because you have learned that already uh, to attend a workshop uh, given by an experienced and professional newborn photographer so you learn everything there is to know about safety, about the comfort of a baby uh, don't just practice on a newborn, it's not a doll, buy a doll and take photos of the doll make sure that you know how to manually set your camera to uh, use your light in a beautiful way, learn how to edit, uh, learn about your, your white balance, learn about uh, poses that you can do, safe poses, don't try super hard poses, uh, don't do poses just because other photographers do them, uh, many poses are composites so they consist of multiple images photoshopped together when the baby is always supported. Uh, I have chosen not to do certain poses because I don't think they're very pretty or natural or good for the baby so I do my poses and I do them all the time so I know how to do them um, get good equipment a good camera a good lens um, choose natural light studio light but learn how to take beautiful photos with the light that you use um, and then first take photos of adults around you maybe your pets uh, older children who just sit for you still and then you take some photos then i will see you in the comments and you will see me in my next video